Let's compare these two fighters by the numbers, and that's our tale of the tape. And you'll see the biggest difference, certainly in the age, Dennis Andres claiming to be 35 by his own admission, may be closer to 40 years old. At ringside for this afternoon's fight, there is the undisputed world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. He's getting ready for his fight coming up in July against Carl Williams. The rules for today, the scoring will be on the 10-point must system. The three-knockdown rule is not in effect. Neither is the standing eight, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. There's our referee for today, Joe Cortez from New Jersey. And we're ready to get this on. Our three scoring judges today, by the way, Richard Murray, Arsenio Garcia, and Ismail Quinones. Round one underway. Dennis Andres in the gold trunks. Jeff Harding, the challenger from Australia, wearing the black. Dennis Andres is traditionally a slow starter, but he's, he's picked up the pace, uh, his normal pace, a little bit here, and I think that's smart. I don't think he wants this kid to get any confidence. I think he wants to try to jump right on him, drain him of confidence, and not let him into this fight. There's Good left, left jab by Harding, who told us ahead of time that was his plan. He wanted to hide behind that jab. He wants to stay behind it until he figures out Dennis Andres, certainly the stiffest competition Jeff Harding has ever seen. The word that used to be synonymous with Dennis Andres was awkward. I mean, he was a very crude, awkward guy, but he has at the advanced stages of his career, in his middle or late 30s, refined himself. Uh, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Emmanuel Stewart says when Dennis Andres got to the Kronk gym in Detroit, he didn't know any tricks. He had to teach them. Alex wouldn't know a good word to describe Andres be relentless. He just beats on you and beats on you. Yeah, he is prepared to do whatever's necessary to win. He'll just keep coming back at you. He has a tremendous resiliency. And so does uh, Jeff Harding. I mean, to this state, uh, so far in his career, against the opponents that he's faced, uh, he has shown the ability to take punishment and come back also. He is not the type of fighter, talking about Harding, who's going to score much going backwards. He's a typical Australian fighter in that respect. He's going to move forward and try to take the offensive. Dennis Andres, though, not an opponent used to going backwards. So No, neither I, man. <laughs> this right. will be fought in the middle of the ring, I would suspect. Right. Good jabs by Harding, but good work to the body by Andres. Left and right combinations to the ribs. You know, it's ironic. Both these men, if you had to find a fault with them, the, the most glaring thing has been that they have good body shot there by Harding. Very, Very good. good. Both men have had defensive liabilities. They've been wide open and easy to hit. A there good right from Andres found home, and you saw it snap the head of Harding back. And now it's Jeff Harding up against the ropes. The point I was making about defense, both men are concentrating at times on holding their hands up much higher than normal. Ooh, there's a cut uh, on cut. the left eye, an abrasion or a cut on the left eye of the challenger Harding. By the amount of redness and a solid right from Andres landed on that eye and it has opened it up it also buckled the legs of Jeff Harding a lot of punches from both fighters have landed there's another left to the ear of Harding these two fighters have taken a toll on each other already here in the first round Bobby we got more mentally than physically. The bell just sounds and round two is underway and Alex between rounds we could see that that cut is more to the side of Jeff Harding's eye. Right it, it may bother him more mentally than physically. I don't think it's going to obscure his vision but it's a tough thing to go in trying for your world title and get busted up in the first round. 
the way these two are landing punches in the first round, you have to wonder if they can do that each, to each other over the course of 12. Not a at lot that of pace. solid blows. Yeah, not, not at that pace they can't. Right now, Dennis Andres is backing up much more than he did in the first round. He's giving more ground. Oh, good, good right, and then two lefts by Dennis Andres. That, that might have looked like a somewhat wild overhand right by Andres, but that's a, a straight right compared to what he used to do. He used to really wing his punches. He has been working hard to shorten them up. Oh, and another right, followed by a right, both landing to Harding, but still neither one of those punches rocked him backwards. I'll tell you something. Jeff Harding may not yet be a world-class fighter, but he has a world-class chin. I mean, he's taken some solid shots right on the button. He did buck a little bit once in the first round, but he's still in there winging. He's and he, a tough kid. And he, in turn, Alex, has landed some solid blows to the body on Andres. Neither one of these two fighters using their bicycle here today. I think they're on the rack. Yeah, no, this, this is a definite phone booth fight. This could be fought in an eight-foot ring. Action here in the second round from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Almost a low blow by Harding, very close. Dennis, Dennis thinks you can lose the almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another right finds the chin of Harding. And Dennis Andre swinging that right, the left lands, and Jeff Harding up against the rope. And Alex, your point I think is well made. That right looks like it's wild, but it's, it's going right where it's supposed to go. Yeah, and Harding also is not just not a good enough fighter to get out of the way of it. He's been able in his 14 pro fights to date to get by on toughness. He can take two punches to land his one because his one has always been stronger, but now he's in with a guy who's as strong as he is. You heard Joe Cortez, the referee, telling Harding to work off the ropes. Just don't stay there. Neither fighter giving any ground, but up to this point, it's been Jeff Harding who's been absorbing most of the heavy blows, the oh. majority. Dan, a lot of fighters would get discouraged when they hit a man with as good, many good punches as Dennis Andres has hit Harding with and haven't had him go down, but Dennis Andres does not discourage easily. Coming to the end of the second round, Rock'em Sock'em. Good. It is. It's a real good fight. Can't hear anything. There I am. Yeah, we're having major we're having major audio problems. Bob, you got to speak very loudly. You're breaking up horribly. <laughs> Ted Williams. Do you see Ted Williams over there? This is action in the third round that just got started. Dennis Andres, the champion, in the gold trunks. And he has been landing some rockets to Jeff Harding's face and body. But, Alex, you made the point about Harding having a world-class chin. At least to this point, it looks like he does. He also has got a good cut, man. That, that cut is, that was not a problem in round two. And you wouldn't know it's there as round three starts. The one thing we know for sure about Jeff Harding, who fights in the same stable with Jeff Fennick, the WBC featherweight champion, is that is that Johnny Lewis, the trainer, does one thing with his fighters. They are relentless, and they are in shape. They could go 20 and 30 rounds. At least that's the impression they give you. He also likes to emphasize body punching. Uh, Harding just landed two solid blows, one with each hand of the body. We now see a little bit of blood from the nose of Jeff Harding. I think, did I call Fennick the... Uh, featherweight champ if I did he's a lightweight champ I'm not sure what I said Jeff Fennick long side at ringside sitting next to Mike Tyson well, you were right the first time he, he was the, he's the retired now but he was the uh, featherweight champion well, sooner or later I'll get it <laughs> oh a good right 
A good contingent has come up from Australia. There's a look at Fennec, right next to Mike Tyson. Yeah. Rooting. <laughs> who's that guy sitting next to Jeff Fennec? <laughs> yeah, <who's> <laughs> Since he retired because of bad hands a few months ago, Jeff Fennick looks like he'd have trouble making the middleweight limit right now. He does look big. Jeff Harding in only his 15th professional fight. And right, right in the center of the ring. He's not going anywhere. And right now, Dennis Andre seems to be loading up a little bit more. He seems to be looking for a little bit of air. I think Jeff, excuse me, Jeff Harding would do very well to try to jump on Dennis Andres right now, not let him catch his breath. Of course, you say that, and you always wonder if Harding needs the breather as well. Two good shots to the body by Andres. Yeah, you see it? And in turn, Harding counters. Good work inside by Jeff Harding. Oh, and a solid right uppercut from Andres. Got between the gloves. Neither man has any ability to slip a punch. They either try, their, their defense is either to hold their hands up in front of their face, or that's all they have. They really just don't throw punches. The end of round three. You know, that might have been hard. And Alex, here in the beginning of the fourth round, as we look back at round number three, one of those rounds very difficult to score. That's one of those easily could go to either fighter. Well, Andres was so dominant, not so dominant, but dominated the first two that you kind of look for the other guy to, ooh, just missed. You look for the other guy uh, to make a move, and Harding definitely made a move in that round. May have been even. Harding might have won it uh, just barely, but it was a round in which he got a little bit back into the fight. And you could sense the concern in Andre's corner in between rounds. Emmanuel Stewart telling Dennis, Dennis, you can't back up and you have to throw more punches. You have to get his respect. Right now, Harding's been hit with a lot of heavy punches, but he has no respect yet for Dennis Andres. We mentioned Dennis Andres was living in London, but came to Detroit to work under that man, Emmanuel Stewart, the patriarch of the Kronk Gymnasium in Detroit, one of boxing's more fabled, fabled gyms. And these two are just trading some heavy-duty artillery. Very, very few jabs. Both men say they like the jab. Dennis Andre is trying to develop one late in his career. There they both tried him. Oh, and a solid right from Andres to a the good ribs inside, of Harding. And a good inside left with it, too, Dan. Ooh. Again, an uppercut from Andres, and then he backs out and follows it with a right. Ooh, and a solid combination left and right from Andres. But Harding just takes it and doesn't move back. And keeps coming back. You have to wonder what Jeff Hardy could do for training, Alex, to prepare himself for this kind of punishment in the ring. He could uh, hit walls with his chin, I guess. I don't mean... Uh... He is getting wrapped with, with, with huge power punches. And every time he gets hit with those big punches from Andres, he, he doesn't back up. He oh. comes and counters on a good right. And that caught Harding's attention. Another right from Andres scores. That hit glove.
The left eye of Jeff Harding is no longer bleeding, but it is swelling a little bit. Oh, and another right to the hairline, followed by a left. And, and right about now, you'd have to think Dennis Andres is saying to himself, my God, what do I have to hit this guy with? Yeah. I think he's reaching a stage where if this kid doesn't have the effect of his punch, show the effect of the punches soon, Dennis will get discouraged. It's been fast and furious. The fourth round is coming to a close here in Atlantic City. Stay with us. This is the beginning of round number five. Dennis Andres, the champion in the gold. Jeff Harding, his challenger, wearing the black. There we go. And Jeff Harding, to this point, has shown that he can take a lot of punishment, illustrated there by that right-left combination from Andres. Emmanuel Stewart told Dennis in the corner in between rounds, keep throwing that right hand. You, you can hit him with it, and no man can take that punch for long. Jeff Harding has not only taken it, but he's also countered with good punches of his own, and there goes Harding down. Two, three, four, and Jeff Harding getting up five, with a smile on his face, and Alex, a mystery blow. I didn't really see yeah. a, a well, well, big enough punch to drop him after what he's taken. We'll wait and see the replay on that. I didn't either. He's obviously not hurt. Only been down once before, never before as a pro, once before as an amateur. And uh, that will count as the first knockdown of his career. Ruled pro a career. knockdown by referee Joe Cortez, and he really had no choice. But it was obvious to... Us at ringside that Harding really wasn't affected at all by whatever it was that put him to the canvas. No, I, I don't think he was affected because I don't think he was hit very much. It, it had to be the feet getting tangled up somehow or just a cuff to throw down. His, maybe his own feet got tangled. We'd like to alert our ABC stations down the line that at the conclusion of this round, we'll be taking a station break. But that's, that's an important event in the fight because that was a case where... Uh, now makes this a two-point round, even though he wasn't hurt, even though there was no apparent punch. Still a two-point round. Well, that's normally the way you could count on a judge to score, that when there's a knockdown, he adds the, takes away the extra point. Of course, you can't imagine hey. that these guys could go to a decision anyway, the way they're fighting. But Watch. they are both very, very well conditioned, as we said at the top. Jeff Harding content to hammer away at the ribs and work inside with the close, compact punches. Neither one of these two has any intention of moving backward. And you and I were talking earlier, Alex, about the Australian fighters. I said that I thought Harding had a facial resemblance to Jeff Fennick. He has a fighting resemblance to Fennick as well. You know, he has the same intensity and the same determination and the same grit. ABC's Wide World of Sports will continue after this word from our ABC stations. Let's listen to Emmanuel to Stewart in the corner of Dennis Andres. You can see them applying the 
cold device that they keep in ice to reduce the swelling. Let's listen in now to the corner of Jeff Harding. Let's see if we can pick something up. Those are the words of his trainer, Johnny Lewis. And we're underway in round number six from the Atlantic City Convention Center. Jeff Harding and Dennis Andres in a match to this point that they've dished out some punishment. You have to wonder whether they can go 12. That's what we're scheduled for here today. And again, we're here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Dennis Andre is a champion in the gold. Jeff Harding in the black. We're underway in round six. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the sixth round. Dan, I know you're supposed to give a 10-8 round whenever there's a knockdown. I scored that last round 10-9 for Dennis Andre. I just didn't give him the 10-8. The punch... We looked at it on replay in between rounds. It was just a cuff, and Jeff Harding's knee, uh, I'm sorry, uh, feet got uh, caught. He just went down really off balance. It was obvious that Harding was fine as he popped right up, and in between rounds, we looked in on the corner of Jeff Harding, and here he is sitting there after five rounds fighting the type of fight that he fought. He wasn't even breathing through his mouth. A remarkably conditioned athlete. I'd have to say the same for Dennis Andres as well. The ability to take a punch comes from conditioning. You have to have a God-given chin. But at the end of the day, the ability to come back, the ability to have resiliency, mean these guys have put in tremendous amounts of time getting themselves ready for this fight. I guess paraphrasing that would be what Vince Lombardi said. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. You're right. No cowards today. No. First time Jeff Hardy is laid on the ropes. His corner yelling, get off the ropes. You can see he doesn't have the skill to turn his man, but he does have the strength to try to fight his way off. And he did so pretty effectively there. That big overhand right from Andres landed on the glove of Harding. Jeff is, is still throwing punches and still landing punches. He looks a little bit slower right now. Neither one of these two, the least bit hesitant to work the body when they're inside close. The other thing when you're in condition is you wait for second wins and third wins. They're the shoulder of Jeff Hardy. Yeah, and Joe Cortez gives him the warning. That's a good job by Cortez. It was obvious that Hardy cleared Andres off with a forearm. Good job there by Joe Cortez. As Dennis Andres started to hold the head of Jeff Hardy, he was working to the midsection of Dennis Andres, and Cortez let him continue to work. Sixth round is winding down. This fight scheduled for 12. If it makes it, we're halfway there. In the seventh round, we're started here in Atlantic City, and Alex, pretty funny words by Emmanuel Stewart in between rounds. Well, he told Dennis Andres, the champion, that you're losing the fight. Now, I question Emmanuel's sincerity in saying that. I think that's motivational. He also said, you got to pick up the pace. <laughs> and Dennis looked at him like, please, God. 
Emmanuel Stewart proving to be a tough man to please, telling his fighter to pick up the pace and you're losing. The only round I've seen that Harding might have won would have been the third. Oh, good work inside by Jeff Harding. Oh, and again, the right gets over the top and lands by Andres. With all the punches they're throwing, their heads are also very close, doing some punishment, uh, causing some punishment uh, from time to time. Again, a reminder to everyone about our light heavyweight bout we've got coming your way tomorrow from this same ring. It's going to be Prince Charles Williams and Bobby Chez on our Slit Small Liquor Professional Boxing Series. That'll be a rematch of their October 87 fight, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central. You know, tomorrow coming down afternoon. It, Dan, we didn't know what this fight would turn out to be because Harding was so unknown. We knew tomorrow's fight would be good because of the styles and the motivation of Chez and Williams in their rematch, but this fight we really were unsure about. But Harding really has been as good or better than we could have ever dreamed. Working the uppercuts is Harding, and then the left counter gets in and lands on the ear, but neither one of these two fighters seems to have an impact on the other guy, and Alex, I, my ears can't be deceiving me. Those are solid blows. Yeah, sometimes you can land a lot of punches and wonder why the other guy doesn't go, and it's because the guy landing the punches doesn't have power. Both these men have proven power. Again, Jeff Harding on the ropes and showing an inability to get off. That's more or less a case of Andres just letting him off. That left eye on Harding is open again, and it may be open a little bit more on top this time. I've got to go back and reference what we were talking about earlier about Dennis Andres being 35 years old and potentially being even older than that, Alex, to keep up this kind of pace for a 12-round fight. Truly remarkable for a man of that age. There are people in England who say Dennis Andres is 40 years old. I mean, he just really is an amazing specimen. He's very dedicated and very, very determined. Draw a hot bath for these two. If this goes much longer, they've got to be hurting. Yeah, it's good to leave it. And the bell sounds to get the eighth round started here in Atlantic City. This is the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship between Dennis Andres and Jeff Harding. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow, and this has been a fight, Alex. Not much on finesse, but a whole lot of toughness and a whole lot of great shots landed by both fighters. And both fighters have stood up to the shots the other man has landed. I mean, it's really been remarkable, especially Jeff Harding. It's hard to believe that this fight, with all the punches that have been landed, that this fight could go to a decision, especially the body punches that have been landed, like the ones that Harding just landed on Andres. You'd think they'd have a toll here in the later rounds that one of these guys, oh, you see Andres there touching his left eye like he thought he might have gotten cut. If it wasn't for the physical signs that this fight has gone this long in terms of the redness around the face of Harding and his cut eye, to look at these two fighters and the way they're moving and the way they're breathing, you'd think this was four or five rounds ago. This is as much action as you will ever see with two guys of this size. Light heavyweights. If you joined us late, the pace you are seeing here in round number eight has not changed from the opening bell. This is actually a little bit, oh, there. Andres, Andres 
goes back on the ropes on purpose, stung by a Harding shot. Andre's trying to load up with a wild right that was easily blocked. And his combination gets between the gloves of Harding. And this is Jeff Harding's opportunity in this fight. Dennis Andres is not real hurt. He's still dangerous, but he needs a rest. And psychologically, Dennis Andres has to be saying to himself, I don't think I can take this guy out. I don't know if I can hit him hard enough to take him out. He may not stay that way, but for the first time in the fight, Dennis Andres actually looks discouraged. Oh, and a good left-right combination from Harding. Both found the chin of Dennis Andres. I think Harding can feel it. He's trying to turn it up a notch. A right from Dennis Andres that took him off balance. One of the signs that fatigue is beginning to set in. Are we reaching the point where the younger fighter has an advantage? I don't know. Four rounds scheduled. This bout's supposed to be 12. Round eight comes to a close. Just underway in the ninth round. The eighth round being Jeff Harding's best round to date, wouldn't you say, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if we can sustain the action of whether Dennis Andres gets his second, third, fourth win, wherever he is. Oh, man. That uppercut is such a dangerous punch. He's landed it a number of times, tries it again. Because that can really bust up a man's nose and give him a lot of trouble breathing. Harding has not seemingly been affected by them. Both of these fighters bleeding from the mouth. It doesn't appear to be serious for either one of the two. But when you look at the two fighters between rounds, Jeff Harding clearly appears to be the better in shape. Good body punch there by Harding. There's a baseball card show taking place here in Atlantic City, and how's that? There's the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio, sitting next to the splendid splinter, Ted Williams, two of baseball's greatest players taking in the fight here today in Atlantic City. Maury Will is also here. Joe DiMaggio, though, is a real good fight fan. He's the kind of guy who'd show up a fight whether he was doing a baseball card signing or not. Well, I bet both of those guys are saying spring training was never this tough. That's right. <laughs> Hitting the little white ball doesn't seem so hard compared to what these two are doing to each other. Each of these fighters would like to have a baseball bat in their hands right now. <laughs> I don't know if they could hurt each other. Yeah. Oh, a good combination from Harding. The crowd sensing a momentum shift. And Jeff Fennick, Harding's Australian teammate and friend over in the front row on the other side of the ring, about to hyperventilate. <laughs> There's just really not a lot to analyze here, uh, Dan. No. I mean, uh, you hit me, I'll hit you, and who's in the best condition, and who can take the punch the best, and who can throw the most punches? That blow from Andres hit the glove of Harding. Don't be confused by the sound. We are in the ninth round of this championship fight. A oh, good left by Andres. 
you pointed out about Harding, but you know, neither of these men is really sucking for air. They both just, it's unbelievable. Again, Harding on the ropes and not showing the ability to get out. And again, it's Andres who more or less lets him off, although Harding comes out with a pretty strong left. Jeff Harding is a little bit too upright there. He's throwing punches, but he needs to bend like that, like he did for the body punch, to get the leverage. He can't stand straight up. The waning seconds of the ninth round, what more can you ask for? In the 10th round, these two pick up where they left off, right in the middle of the ring and wailing away. And Alex, I know announcers often are guilty of overhyping their event, but what do you say about a fight like this? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a little bit of trouble right now because I never thought this fight was going the distance. So I gotta figure out the scoring. Harding, I have winning the last two rounds. He's climbed back into it. I think he'd have to at least win two out of these last three. That's but the way my scorecard reads as well, that he would have to win two of the three to have a shot at it. Because it was Dennis Andres through the first six rounds with maybe Harding stealing the third. But it has been Jeff Harding and his ability to take everything that Dennis Andres has thrown his way. And we're not talking about fluff either. We're talking about heavy duty, heavy duty barrages. A good example there. Two good lefts from Andres. Now, by the same token, Harding oh. has hit Andres with a lot. A good example of that left to the body, but Andres doesn't appear to be worse for he wear. He came right back with a brutal right hand to the head. That slid over the left eye of Harding is just starting to open again. Dennis Andre is shaking his head as he backed out of that last exchange. Has to be a frustrated fighter. All of a sudden, uh, Jeff Harding is starting to show the effects of this. Bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the mouth, bleeding from the left eye, but still coming forward. Still trying to become the first light heavyweight, the Australian light heavyweight, to win a world championship. Uh, he's got the heart of a big-time fighter. Now, you have to wonder if he's fighting a fighter who wants to show a lot of movement, what kind of fighter Harding would be. But we've certainly not had any of that today by either one of these two. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He might have trouble with a clever boxer, but there aren't going to be too many men who stand there and make themselves available outside of Dennis Andres who are going to be able to stand up to this. He's a tough kid. That may be the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> what, scares, tough kid. what scares me is it made sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, you, if you don't know he's a tough kid by now, you haven't been watching. <laughs> this is the end of the 10th round. We'll be back. Stay with us, won't you?
That's the bell that begins the 11th round for the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship here at the Convention Center in Atlantic City. Dennis Andres wearing the gold, Jeff Harding the challenger wearing the black, and these two have wailed away on each other for 10 rounds. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow, and some punishment has been dished out, chewed, digested, and neither one of these guys showing much in the way of an effect. Well, Harding well, bleeding from the nose now. But again, it's difficult to tell whether it's more along the line of abrasions or really something internal. When somebody bleeds from the nose like Harding is bleeding, you wonder whether he has broken that nose. The minute I say neither one of them showing much for worse for wear, Harding is now beginning to bleed pretty profusely from that nose. Ooh. Again, the good Harding body punch. A lot Harding. of fighters are afraid to get in close like that, aren't they, Alex, and work the body? Certainly leaves you exposed to the uppercut. Especially when you're as busted up as, as uh, Jeff Harding is and when a guy uses his head like that. Oh. oh, and another right. The left was blocked, but the right really rocked Harding. And what does he do? He counters and knocks Andres back to the ropes. Arm punching right now. Jeff Harding should dig down and rip some punches. Nut arm punch. And the blood really starting to come out of the nose of Jeff Harding. And now it's Dennis Andres, but Harding fights his way off the ropes. Look at the, the Andres head. Andres leaning on Harding, attempting to keep him and keep him on the ropes and nifty little sidestep by Jeff Harding. That's the first time he's made a move on the ropes. Oh, tr tremendous body punching by Jeff Harding. And it shows on Dennis Andres, who's covering up. A little bit of a wobble in Dennis Andres right there for those four body punches. And that right sends Andres back. And for the first time, Dennis Andres giving the appearance of a man in trouble. If Hardy could dig down and, and throw and land a series of power punches, Joe Cortez might stop it. 15 seconds left in the 11th round. Dennis Andres ought to throw a punch. Joe Cortez looking closely. Inside five seconds here in the 11th. That's it, there's a bell, one more round. And look at the spring and the step of Jeff Hardy at the end of the 11th round. He threw his hands up. Bounce back to his corner. Let's take a look at some of the blows from the 11th, Alex. This is, this is after the body punches that got Andres in trouble. He went back to the ropes. Harding putting together a series of punches could not get over the one or two punches in combination that would force the referee to stop it. A lot of blood from Jeff Harding, but again, he's not breathing deeply. These are two of the most finely conditioned fighters I have ever seen, Alex. You know, we said at the top of the show. Oh, and again, oh. Andres is rocked early by a left from Harding. Boy, and this, this round not even 10 seconds old and Andres against the ropes. Dennis Andres will not give up his title without a fight. Dennis Andres' legs appear to be very stiff. He doesn't seem to have a lot underneath him. If Jeff Hardy could put together a series, oh! Oh, and there it is! The combination and Andres is down. Dennis Andres' legs are stiff as can be. And Jeff Harding on the attack, and that's it. He's down. 
There is no, look at Jeff Hardy. There is no three knockdown rule. Dennis Andre says I'm fine. And it's Joe over. Gerson stops the fight. Jeff Harding, the first Australian ever to be the light heavyweight champion of the world. The Australian contingent is in the ring. On the shoulders of his countrymen, Jeff Harding. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. Here is Jeff Harding. Two lefts, and the combination sends him to the ground. Dennis Andres, it just appeared he just gave everything he had. He wasn't unconscious when he went down. He just had nothing more to give. On my scorecard, Jeff Harding needed a knockout to win, and he got it. Dennis Andres rose for the third time, but Joe Cortez wisely steps in, stops it, and Jeff Harding, the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world. We'll return here to Atlantic City for an interview. We'll be back in just a minute. test can you hear me I hear you Ogden. how long do we have for an interview all right okay I hear you I hear you fine now what's gonna happen here no we don't we don't win no we don't have to do that let's go right to interviews Congratulations. Alex I'll throw it to you Yeah, how much time does? Alex, I'll throw it to you, Alex. I'll throw it to you. But how much time does? Jeff, Matthew, let me talk to him at the TV, please. Please. Come on. Did he need a knockout to win? No. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Johnny, Johnny, please, Johnny, please. Johnny. The crowd here in Atlantic City is on their feet, and Alex Wallow is in the ring with the new champion. Jeff, not one of the best fights of the year, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Your reaction to your unbelievable performance. I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank everybody from Australia that came out here with me. My trainer, I love Johnny Lewis, I love so much, and everyone else who helped me. I'd like to thank Master Saad Mohammed for giving me such a great sparring session in the preparation for this fight. And also, I'd like to thank everybody else that was involved with Jeff Harding's success. And I'd like to say hello to my mother and mum and dad at home. And I'll be home. Because I'm the champ. Jeff, when you got this shot, because Donnie Lalon retired, you only had 14 pro fights. In your mind, was there doubt whether you were ready to win a world championship? Johnny Lewis took the fight. That was good enough as a win for me. He's my mentor. He tells me what to do. I just do the boxing. Johnny Lewis, I love this guy. Because of Johnny Lewis, I'm here. And Stevie Cansdell, I love you too, brother. Jeff, I have the scorecards here. One judge had the uh, champion, Dennis Andres, ahead by two points. One judge had him ahead by one point, And Richard Murray had him ahead by three points. You needed that knockout to win. Did you think when you came out for round 12, you did? I got the knockout. I was there till the end. The knockout came. That's boxing. Congratulations to you, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks for talking much. to us. Let me try to get a word with Dennis Andres, the former champion. Dennis. Yeah. I know you're terribly disappointed. I don't know who were was ahead on the card. You were ahead. He had to knock you out to win the fight. You're kidding. I was told that I was behind. Well, and would you fought any differently if you thought you were ahead? I would have jabbed some more. It looked like you ran out of gas, Dennis. You just yeah. ran out of gas at the end of the 11th and couldn't I continue did. in the 12th. I did. 
did you were you amazed and discouraged at how he was able to take your punches? No, I wasn't discouraged. I just kept on punching. But you know, I was in real best physical condition. I didn't feel I was really in, you know, best physical condition. Well, I know you're disappointed. Thank you I for am. taking the time to talk to us, Dennis. It was a terrific fight. It was. It was an amazing fight. It was a good fight. I take nothing away. Where do you go from here? I don't know. I gotta sit down and talk with my manager. Okay, Dennis, thanks very much. Back to Dan Deardorf at ringside. Thank you, Alex, and interesting there, Dennis Andres saying he thought he was behind on the fight. Remember, we told you Emmanuel Stewart, we thought uh, not wisely telling his man he was behind. So there is a new light heavyweight champion of the world in the WBC, Jeff Harding, for the first time in the 12th round since Dennis, Hart, since Dennis Andres rather, to the ground. Andres got back up, couldn't mount anything at all, and Dennis can't stay on his feet, down for the second time in the 12th round. Remarkably, got back up, and Jeff Harding closes in for the kill, and as Alex told you, needed the knockout here in the 12th to win this fight. So Jeff Harding, the new WBC light heavyweight champion, and all of Australia must be proud, their first light heavyweight champion. That's it from Atlantic City. Remember, we'll be back here tomorrow for Prince Charles Williams and Bobby Chez. For Alex Swallow, I'm Dan Deardorff, and back to Frank Gifford.